Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Norm Baltimore. When Philadelphia public school students returned to class earlier this month, they were attending a district racked by the firing of thousands of employees and the shuttering of 23 schools due to an over $300 million budget deficit. Now joining us to discuss this is Rania Kalik. She's an independent journalist reporting on the underclass and marginalized. Her work has appeared on The Nation, Extra, Salon, Truthout, Al Jazeera America, and much more. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Jessel. So Rania, um, you've been reporting extensively on um, public education across the country, and we're, we're gonna start our series of interviews with you in Philadelphia, which is perhaps, or maybe undoubtedly, the school district in the greatest uh, point of crisis around the country. Um, can you describe the scale of what Philadelphia is going through right now? Yeah, so like you mentioned, there were thousands of teachers, almost 4,000, well, not just teachers, uh, teachers, counselors, school aides, secretaries, assistant principals that were laid off at the end of last school year. Um, and uh, there's also been 23 Philadelphia public schools uh, that were shut down this year. So students went to uh, very different, uh, the, the year just started um, and the year's already very different than it was before. Um, Philadelphia public schools are very uh, dramatically underfunded. Um, they've been financially starved for years. Like you mentioned, over $300 million right now of, of a deficit. Um, and so these school closings and the laying off of uh, pretty much every, you know, every every possible imaginable uh, imaginable person uh, that's necessary for a school to function um, is is basically uh, being justified by the fact that there isn't enough money, um, and a lot of that's true. Um, but you know, the, the what you have in the end is you have students who literally, I mean, they don't. They're going back to schools where there's larger classrooms. There's no extracurricular activities. I mean, almost every single program has been uh, cut. Arts, music, sports, um, and counselors. I mean, one of the biggest problems right now is there's no counselors. I mean, there's one school was able to get one of their counselors back, and it's like one counselor for 1,200 students. And if you think about it, I mean, think about being a, a senior in high school and how much you really you know, depend on your counselor to help you applying to colleges. I mean, it's just, it's really a mess. It's a nightmare scenario for Philly public school students right now. And um, many of these students are the hi highest need students the most underprivileged that are taking, that are getting the brunt of these cutbacks. Can you talk about just how the process of the school, that the schools were closed and the layoffs happened? Um, it can't exactly be described as democratic. No, not at all. In, um, in Philly, and this is something you see around the country in these cities where a lot of schools are being shut down and defunded, is there's no democratic control over the school system. Um, there's either mayoral control, like you have in Chicago and DC, or like in Philly, it's it, Philly, Public schools are under state control. Um, mostly, there, there's what's called the School Reform Commission, um, which was put in place in, I think, 2002. Um, it's basically made up of five individuals, three of which are uh, are appointed by the governor, and the other two are appointed by the mayor, and they are accountable to nobody. I mean, they're not elected. So the people of Philadelphia, I mean, there's no way that the city would be able to implement these kind of draconian policies towards education uh, if the people of Philadelphia had any say, because they are adamantly opposed to the defunding, the dismantling of their public school system. Uh, so yeah, this, this entire this entire structure of shutting down schools is completely dependent on an undemocratic, very authoritarian process. And some have described this as a, a crisis that was man-made. Um, talk about the state's role and the governor, uh, Tom Corbett, a uh, Republican governor, what his role has been in this um, crisis in Philadelphia. Yeah, so Pennsylvania is a unique state. It's one of a handful of states that doesn't have a funding formula for how they fund uh, how they fund public education throughout the state. So, in, in Pennsylvania, because of that, uh, actually spends like the least amount of money in proportion to other uh, states around the country. One of the it's like one of the last one of the least. There's like ten states that spend very little money, and Pennsylvania is one of them on um, public education. So it basically forces school districts to rely on federal funding um, and local property taxes. So what happens is for poor districts like Philadelphia that don't have as high property taxes or there's not as much home ownership, so not as many people are paying property taxes, you have fewer funds. Um, and so this obviously dramatically affects 
public education. Uh, and that's one of the reasons you see such a deficit every year with Philadelphia public schools. On top of that, you've got a Republican governor who every single year since he's been in office has you know, cut a huge chunk of the state's public education budget. And so that severely impacts districts like Philadelphia that are already struggling to get by. So that's why you see this really, you know, severe uh, scenario right now where there's thousands of teachers and, you know, counselors and teacher's aides that have been fired and uh, schools closed because, like I said, the, the district is fi being financially starved. A lot of that is because of the state. And uh, finally, you know, this isn't going down without a fight. Can you talk about what teachers and students and parents are doing to challenge these policies? So Philadelphia is really unique also because it's got a really vibrant uh, community of residents who are adamantly opposed to education, to the corporate education agenda, I guess you could call it. Um, there's, you know, the student, the Philadelphia Student Union has been on top of this. It's, it's, um, it's they've, they've done student walkouts, they've coordinated student walkouts. There's teachers, um, the teachers union, there's also teachers organizations that have been involved. And there was a count, you know, when, when the counselors were fired at the end of last year, there was, um, they did this really, really great campaign, uh, where they basically like promoted various counselors and talked about like the personal, uh, the way that they've personally helped students, um, that they've, you know, that they've worked with. Uh, there was also a hunger strike that involved, you know, teachers and parents, uh, late last year. And, you know, this, this activism is continuing and there's protests all the time. There's, um, you know, there, it, it, it happens all the time. There's protests outside of the SR, the, the school reform commission, whenever they have meetings, there's constantly this, this activism going on, this organizing. So it's really, that, that part's really, really exciting. It's just difficult for them to have an impact when the people making these decisions are not accountable to, uh, the residents. Rania Kalik, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And this is just the first part of our series of interviews with Rania about her work. Go to therealnews.com for that full collection. Thank you so much for joining us.